Hermann Goering is known for being one of the most despicable and most notorious Nazis. Goering would find himself the head of the Luftwaffe throughout the Second World War, and would become the Reich Marshal, the highest rank of the Wehrmacht. Known also for his extravagance, flamboyance, art theft and brutality, he was the second most powerful man in Germany at a point. Today, Goering is linked to the Holocaust, with an intense devotion for the theft of artwork and property, stolen from the Jewish victims of the Holocaust. What is not known as much, however, is the fact that Goering had a brother. A brother who was completely the opposite to Hermann. A brother who would oppose the Nazis and help the Jews who were persecuted brutally in the Holocaust. Today we look at the incredible story of Albert Gunther Goering. If you do enjoy our videos, please support the channel by subscribing. Born on the 9th of March 1895 in Berlin, Albert Goering was the fifth child of the former Reich Commissar Heinrich Ernst Goering and his wife Fanny Tiefenbrunn. The family life wasn't great for the Goerings, with their father being away often in modern day Namibia and Haiti. Their mother was falling in love with a wealthy Jewish physician, Dr. Hermann von Eppenstein. He would later become the godfather to Hermann Goering and Albert Goering, who would house the family in his southern castles. The family spent most of the year at Berg Weldenstein, a huge imposing medieval fortification in Franconia. The summers were spent at Berg Mautendorf, a fairy tale castle in the mountains of Austria. Their lives were rather outdated, with meals being announced by hunting horn and staff wearing medieval regalia. There were always rumours floating around about the affair that von Eppenstein would be having with the Goering's mothers. Many even believe today that von Eppenstein and Albert Goering are father and son. If this was true, it would make Albert Goering half Jewish. In 2016, Albert's daughter told the BBC that her mother had said that Albert had told her that von Eppenstein was indeed his father. During the First World War, Albert served in the trenches with the German army as a signal engineer. It would be during this conflict that his brother Hermann would get his reputation for being a flying ace. In 1919, Albert enlisted at the Technical University of Munich to study engineering, and would rub shoulders with the infamous Heinrich Himmler. Albert was rather politically disinterested, however his brother Hermann would circulate in the beer halls of Munich, in which he would listen to many speakers, including Adolf Hitler. Following the failed Munich Putsch, Hermann Goering was shot and would go into exile following a morphine addiction. This time marks the beginning of 12 years of silence between the two brothers. Albert disregarded Hermann because of his political ideas and is remarked to have said, Oh, I have a brother in Germany who is getting involved with that bastard Hitler. Hermann Goering would later say, We never spoke to each other because of Albert's attitude towards the Nazi party. Neither of us was angry at each other. In 1938 with the Anschluss of Austria, this would mark an end to the brother's silence. The two met at Albert's lodge northwest of Vienna and Albert was exhausted. He had been tirelessly arranging exit visas and raising money for his Jewish friends to escape the Nazi rule. He had come head to head with Nazi thugs in Vienna and would defend Jewish ladies who were being mocked and were forced to scrub the cobbled streets on their knees. During this incident, the SS officer in charge inspected Albert Goering's identification and ordered the group to stop scrubbing. He did this because he realised that he would be responsible for allowing the brother of Hermann Goering to be publicly humiliated. This would just be the start of Albert Goering's help for the Jewish people persecuted under the Nazi rule and regime. Albert Goering would later use his influence to get his former Jewish boss, Oskar Pilzer, freed after he was arrested, and Goering then helped Pilzer and his family escape Germany. He allegedly did this for a number of other German dissidents. Albert would later step up his anti-Nazi efforts when he was made an export director at the Skoda Works in Czechoslovakia. He would encourage minor acts of sabotage and was in contact with the Czech resistance. Here he would often forge his brother's signature on documentation to allow dissidents to escape. If he was caught he would then use his brother's influence to gain his release, which Hermann Goering helped him out on a number of occasions. One of the most remarkable acts of all was when Albert Goering would send trucks to Nazi concentration camps with a request for labourers. These trucks would then be filled with workers and then be taken to an isolated area. The passengers would then be allowed to escape. After being questioned at the Nuremberg trials, many of those who were helped by Albert Goering would testify for him. In 1944, a death warrant was issued for Albert demanding his execution on site due to his activities. He would go on the run and hide out in Prague. Hermann Goering would try everything to save his brother, and it was stated at Nuremberg by Albert that my brother told me that it was the last time he could help me, and that his position had been shaken, 
and he had to ask Himmler to smooth the entire matter over. The Goering brothers would meet for the last time in May 1945 in a transit jail in Augsburg. Hermann Goering was a prized prisoner for the Allies, whilst Albert was detained for just being his brother. Allegedly in the courtyard of the jail, the brothers embraced and Hermann apologised, saying, I am very sorry, Albert, that it is you who has to suffer so much for me. You will be free soon, and take my wife and child under your care. Hermann Goering would escape the hangman's noose at Nuremberg following his suicide by cyanide, however Albert would spend the next two years in prison, and was freed in 1947. Because of his family name, he was shunned in Germany, and would struggle to find work. He found work occasionally as a translator and as a writer. In his later years, he lived on a pension from the government, and realised if he married on his death, the pension payments would be transferred to his wife. As a sign of gratitude, he married his housekeeper in 1966, so she could receive his pension. A week later, Goering died, without any of his wartime anti-Nazi activities being publicly acknowledged. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it quite interesting. Thanks for watching The Unsolved Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching.